Well, good morning. We had a skiff of snow last night. It uh, snowed a little yesterday, rained almost all the day. It was pretty muddy out. Um, it's not super cold, but it's cold enough. Got some of these guys in the pen that I'm feeding. There's a couple of steers there. And that salty over there. We've got him in um, during the bad weather, just feeding him, salty. Just a skiff overnight. So I've got some bales loaded. I'm taking to some horses that bend off. And them that are being weaned. So we're here at the uh, house getting some air. The tire went flat on this pickup while I was gone and so I pulled it over here to kind of see what was wrong with it. And uh, Ross is there and the tire up so we'll see. So Ross put an air in it. time we ever, ever let her into a trailer. Probably the third time we've ever caught her. Our uh, alley isn't the best to work in right now. Same here. First time she's been led down this alley. And of course the conditions are acceptable and everything you want. Gotta to learn to walk through mud and water right from the start. First time she's gonna be led into a trailer. Looky there. She just wanted to get out of that mess. What do you think, Ross? The muddy? <laughs> muddy. <laughs> muddy. Well, it's muddy. We don't have four wheel drive. We don't have mud tires. Let's see if we can get out of here. We're going to stay out here in case we got to push. Come on, first gen. Do your stuff. Oh, man, these first gens with Posi Track. Well, it looks like we're out of here. We're still moving, still going. Still going. Oh, first gen, do a wheel, two wheel drive. What do you think, Ross? What, what about the mud? What about tires and mud? See that tire, bring like that? Probably there's nothing but mud tires. Yeah. Four by four. Four by four. Brown Philly. My monster. Unregistered. The mare DNA didn't match the mare's dam side. Blue Roan Philly. By Texas Blue Valentine. Out of Stargazer. Uh, probably the third time she's ever been tied up. First time she was ever loaded by, by being haltered. Same with the brown filly here. So this is her first time in the round pen. She's never been approached like this. Uh, none of this has ever been done. She's brand new to it. I said she probably had a halter twice. Uh, when we brand, once when we branded her, and maybe once after that. I don't. 
I don't remember exactly. But this has never been, she's never been in a round pen. She's never had this much room to kind of move around. She's probably just been tied in an alley. So she doesn't know anything about this rope. Henson has a rope. He's just kind of, kind of walking around her and letting her kind of see it. He's kind of letting her move a little bit, but still has a little direction on her so that she doesn't turn that hip to him. And that way she also learns that he wants her in a, in a special, or not special, but a certain spot, like right there, kind of likes her right there. And, and that's real comfortable. She's kind of relaxed a little bit, knowing that right now. So she can feel the change in his body energy and his motion. And, and uh, then she can just know that that's kind of where he wants her and she can relax there. So now she's still searching. Of course, there's this other filly behind me and she's been buddied up with her. So she's guaranteed thinking about her. And so every once in a while, she'll she'll see Henson. <laughs> I mean, she's probably seeing him, but she'd rather not. See, she's, she's just kind of drifting over here towards the gate, thinking that she's gonna get back over here with this filly, which isn't gonna happen. So she'll deal whatever she thinks she has to. And when she makes a good change, uh, he'll he'll just kind of let her relax. I got ropes just just barely touching her. He'll rub her with it, and she'll know it's okay. He's not jerking on her, make her do anything other than just stand there. And, and then when she's comfortable, he'll just ask her to kind of move that front end. He's gonna change direction get to the other side. Horses have two sides. They're not the same on both sides. A lot of people probably don't understand that always. Same, see, she she drifted over here thinking she was gonna get back over with that filly and she's gonna find out that's not gonna happen. She's really paying attention to him now and he just keeps kind of moving to her. She'll find a spot where she's comfortable and he'll just stop just like that. She'll sniff him and he'll see if he can push her a little bit more. She does have some respect of uh, pressure, it looks like. She, she understands it a little bit. She's only been caught twice and the first time probably other than just Brandon or nothing and the second time we might have tied her for 10-15 minutes and that's about it. Of course this is a monster foal. She's by monster and most of his tend to be pretty easy going. Uh, they're smart. But they're they're very athletic too. See, that's a good change. She's pretty comfortable there. She's actually standing on top of a tarp. She probably doesn't even realize it. Snow there. She's really sniffing him. Figuring out he's uh, not not the boogeyman. Doesn't smell anything like a cougar. Unless unless Danielle's been around him, then maybe he might smell a little bit like a cougar. He's okay. She's okay with it. She'd really rather not walk that direction because her friend is on this other side. So this is kind of a task for her, but uh, she she's doing well. See, there's a lot, a lot of confidence right there. She's feeling good about herself. Finding out all of this really isn't too scary. And and she can kind of use Henson as a friend. She doesn't have to have the blue filly. See, she's really paying attention. She might actually be liking that scratching there, rubbing on her. 
I'll change it up and go down to the hind quarter down the the gasket and thigh and the gasket there and then underneath the, her belly that's a little more sensitive a little more vulnerable natural instincts kind of take over you know, want to protect those areas she's feeling pretty good about it see now he switched sides and that's a different side she's comfortable on her left side her right side she has to figure that out and just kind of keep moving to her and she'll make a change and then he'll kind of stop and then he'll reward her and rub her whatever he thinks she's gonna like and she's actually moving really good as far as moving that that hip over and that hind quarter is kind of out of the way he's going to ask that of her eventually anyway so she's getting to where she she moves good but he'll want her to kind of stand there so he'll just do it just like that now he's not asking anything of her her face or head or nothing he just wants to rub her on her and now he'll when he asks something then she'll know it so he just lets her sit there, kind of take it all in. She's still talking. She wants to talk to her, her friend over here. And he says, I rubbed you with my hand. I'm going to go ahead and let you look at the rope, and then I want to rub you with it. She wants to bite it and take a, take a, a snack with her. She wasn't mean about it. She's just trying to figure it out. Now she's accepting of it. She's loosened up. She's relaxed a little more. Now he's pulling down her thigh and her gaskin and her leg there. All vulnerable spots. She has to have a lot of trust and she's gaining it. She's not too worried. Same with under her belly and down her front leg. He'll just ask her to move. You can tell he's not holding her tight all the time so she doesn't get confused on on signals. He'll be pretty direct with what he wants and she'll feel it without having to get real rough or anything. Now he just put that loop right over the back of her and touched her hind quarter and down her leg in her flank a little bit she's not too worried about that throw it around her leg a little bit around her up over her back see that something got her a little more excited so you just keep working with that until she settles down let her know it's okay There, she's relaxed and figured it out. It's probably okay. And he just swinging that rope around her, just so she gets used to the rope over her head. Gets used to the sound of it. Pretty soon, she'll know that it's not going to hurt her. do some of these things here wanting a rope on one you do this from the start you're usually not too afraid of a rope and they don't uh, worry too much about that they pay more attention to what their job is he's gonna ask her to step back and she's never stepped back before so he's gonna use a little bit of pressure on her She'll search a little bit, and hopefully she'll, there you go. She just figured it out, and he just released that pressure. 
He's got that rope under or around the girth there and he'll work it back through her belly and down to back to her flank. Let her know that none of that stuff is gonna hurt her. It's just part of being around her. Just stuff that might happen and it's okay she she can accept it. It's not gonna hurt her. So see he asked just for her to move a little bit, come to him a little. And do the same right there. And he just asked her to move that foot to come out of the rope there. So he'll kind of get her to step out there. She's kind of dragging it, so she keeps hanging up on it there. She take a step. So he introduced it to her and now he's gonna put just a little more pressure so that she can stand a little bit to more pressure of that rope, a little bit more aggressive, moving it around. Not that it's pulling on her, but just moving it around. Just a little more wild. there comes a, a point you want them to figure all this out. It's kind of like when you're saddling and starting to get on and a lot of people will kind of sneak around their horses and and then <laughs> when they can't sneak or something happens, they throw their hands up or they do this or that and then their horse kind of freaks out because they were sneaking around them. We want to work them up to that. We don't want to get aggressive, but at some point you, you just have to kind of be aggressive in in your manner as far as moving around and a little more reckless not that it, it hurts or harms but see the rope was just thrown a little faster she's on a different side now too so that's all different I mean, you could probably easily walk up to her with that loop and set it over the back of her back, but that would just be sneaking it on her. So it wouldn't accomplish what he's trying to accomplish at this point. Just allowing her to move freely to a certain point, um, still paying attention to him, knowing that none of that right there is gonna hurt her. So when he swings rope or removes his arm or he jumps or moves quickly. She doesn't have a flight reaction. She can know that that's just part of being around a human. 